Hello everyone and welcome back to Positive Games. I'm finally back with another tutorial after a couple of months. Uh, first, my microphone broke. I had to get a new one. Then uh, Scratch 3 came out. So then I wanted to re-record the tutorial for Scratch 3. Yeah, so uh, here we are. So this tutorial is going to have quite a few things in it. We're going to do quite a couple things today. So first off, let's have a look at the things that we'll do today. So first of all, I have a new link where you can get the files. Because some people told me the website, which I linked before, doesn't work for them. So now I'm just going to put all these files in my own uh, Dropbox. And you'll find the link in the description down there. And you can just download the files I have here. And that way you should be able to follow my tutorial, even if you weren't able to do it before because of the download link, now it should work. And the first thing we're gonna do is add more sounds. So I noticed that we don't even have the main menu music just yet in the game. And we're also missing the the ambient noises when you're in the office. So we're gonna add all that stuff. And then we'll also add the camera interface. So we'll make it so you can open up the camera and click all the camera interface buttons, open up all the cameras. And that's going to be uh, the tutorial for this time. And I'm really going to try, this time I promise, I'm really going to try to get the next one out a bit more quickly than this time. But anyways, let's get started. So let's just go to the backdrop and import the sound. So you go to FNAF, Sounds, Main Menu. And here it is, the Main Menu theme, the iconic theme. Now, when the uh, flag is clicked, it should set the volume to 100% and start playing the menu theme. Yeah. And now, as soon as the newspaper disappears and then it shows you the night you're on, that music should stop. So we'll go to, the, to this static sprite. Let me just rename it and add that stop all sounds block. So now let's try it out. So as you can see, the music is playing, or as you can hear. <laughs> And now, it should stop right when the... Yeah, so it's perfect. It's just like the real game. Now, in the office, you don't have any sounds yet, except the lamps, and I think the doors. Yeah. But all those ambient noises are still missing. So let's go back to the backdrop, and add a receive start game block. And then it should just start playing all these sounds in a loop. So let's just copy this one for each sound. So it, the, the the ambient should always be changing because the the, uh, the ambient in the actual game is made out of multiple sounds and they're all a uh, different length. So if you play them, um, if you play each of them on repeat, it'll always sound a bit different, which will make it a bit more interesting. So let's go to the sounds, office, ambience, not just office, office, ambience. And import this one, this one, this one, and this one. The circus we'll need later. That's when, uh, I think, when Freddy's in the kitchen. So let's just have a quick listen to some of these. Yeah. So you might, you might recognize this one. This one's pretty well known. You might recognize all of these. This is probably the the best known one, just because it's so loud that this is all you hear, basically. And also this this one. And now we can just add these sounds in here. Okay, so now we have this. And now let's try it out. Yep, so as you can see, that's the normal soundscape. You know, I'm so used to the sound that I'm already expecting the phone call to happen, even though we haven't programmed it yet. But it's just so ingrained in my mind, you know, that that sound's going to start right now. Now, another cool thing we can add is using the new pan left-right effect. We can now make the doors, uh, the sounds of the doors stereo. So let's put the left door at minus 50. 
of the pattern. We can just do this at the beginning when the flag is clicked because we're never going to change it. And the right door to plus 50. Okay, so for the lights, we actually have to go to the office sprite because that's the one playing that sound. So what we're going to do is just, we copy this and now switch in these things with the pan left right, left right effect. And this was where it's on the right, so this has to be minus 50. And let's try it out. Yeah, so that works pretty well. Yep, okay. So the sound was getting a bit annoying for me. So now we already have all the sounds. Now let's get to the uh, to the camera system. So let's make a new sprite and look for the right costume. FNAF, textures, cams and 420. Okay. Yep, so now let's select the fill tool and fill it with nothing and remove that outer black Thing that was on there so now when the game starts it should be hidden uh, when the when the project starts and then when the game starts it should show go to zero zero and the size seems about right but as you can see zero zero is not quite correct so we need to test that out Set it to minus 150. Yeah, that looks about. Yeah, minus 160. Set it to minus 160. So let's try that out already. And we can also add this forever block and add a go to front layer. And then we can also set the transparency, the ghost effect, to let's say 25. And that looks pretty good, I'd say. So now we need to program that the that you can swipe over this and that will open the camera, okay? So first let's make another sprite which is gonna have all the camera sprites which is the camera flip up and I have these, I even made them transparent for you already which is quite nice of me <laughs> uh, and now you'll have to select them by hand Oops. in Scratch 2 you could just select all of them and import them like that but apparently you can't do that anymore in Scratch 7, which I don't know why they changed it, but okay. 10 and 11. So you can see 11 is already a black screen. So that's that flip animation here. And now let's make it so that when the flag is pressed, it hides itself. And when it receives start game, it should still be hidden, but it should already be ready to flip up. You know, and now we should just test out the position. Let's try out zero zero. No, minus fifty maybe. Yeah, forty five, forty, forty five. Yeah, minus forty five. Now let's just add a next costume, and this is what the animation is gonna look like. So as you can see, we wanted to cover the full screen, not just the not just part of it. So as you can see on the last frame, it's only up to about here, even though we want it to go much further. So let's try that again. And also change the size a bit. Set that to 150 maybe, 135. Yeah, I think that's 130 is pretty good. Yeah. So now let's add a forever block again. I just <laughs> removed it. We're gonna need it again. Now let's make a, make a variable called camera up and when the game starts the camera should obviously not be up so that's get, that gets set to zero. So now let's add a new receive block or new broadcast actually which will be um, camera underscore animation or you can call it whatever you want but you know uh, and then when that happens it should go to the first costume obviously and show itself then how many costumes do we have 11 so it should repeat 10 times go to the next costume so let's try it out so this is what the animation is going to look like and then it should hide again and 
set the this is scratch 3.0 can't save any project you just have to ignore this here let's set the camera up to one as soon as the animation is over so the camera is at zero and then when it receives the message go up goes up then hides itself again and the camera is one and now let's make it so the office hides when the camera is one so let's go over here add an if then else thing show and hide if the camera one if the camera is zero it should show and if not it should hide and let's add this in here so now the camera is up so it's gonna be hidden now we just need to add this part of the forever script to every part of the office so let's add that in here also this one's gonna need it he's gonna need it that one's gonna need it and that one's gonna need it and let's just add them all one by one into their little uh, forever <laughs> loops and also in the in the case of the doors they hide when they're out of reach and also the buttons so we need to add this not in the main forever loop but in the show for that forever loop and remove this show here The same goes with the with the buttons again. Now also we need to look where did we have the thing that changes the yeah. So now let's go to the office sprite and make it so the office doesn't uh, move anymore if the if the camera is up. So let's just put all this in here, and now the office let's show the office variable won't move anymore when the camera is up. And now let's just go back here, set it to zero. And as you can see, the whole thing works again. So we didn't break anything or, every, or anything. Let's move it up. Perfect. And we should also add a little wait, 0 0.1 seconds, because you might have seen that it blinked for a second, because the other sprites didn't hide fast enough for this one. But now it didn't blink, so it's perfect. And now, as you can see, there's no other sprites here. This is just the backdrop. So it's it's clear for us to add all the other cameras. Now, let's add the functionality for the this thing here to open the camera. So we will need a forever loop again. Yeah. So it should wait until the mouse Y position is lower than, let's say, See, this is another thing. Where do you read the mouse Y? It doesn't say anywhere, does it? I don't think so. I don't think you can... See, now I have to try it out. Let's put it through this side. Minus 135, let's say. Then it should open up the camera. So send the event camera animation then it should wait until the ca mouse y oh well then also it should set the ghost effect to let's say 35 so y the user can see that he can't uh that he can still um yeah anyways <laughs> uh and now after the animation is over it should wait until the mouse is over minus 135 again And then wait again until it's under and make a new animation, camera animation, close. Yeah. Now this can work as a loop already. Now let's go to back to this camera sprite and just duplicate it and add camera animation close. Go to the last frame and change the next costume and switch it for previous costume. Didn't they add that as a new, as a new? Apparently not. 
I thought they added that as a new block. Previous, previous costume. Apparently not. Okay. Well, we'll still have to do it the old way then, with costume number minus one. I thought they added it, but apparently they didn't. No. Okay. And as you can see, that was a bit stupid. We need to change it to zero right when the animation begins. So let's move it back up, back down. As you can see, the animation works pretty nicely already. Now let's execute this script. And now, see that works. First of all, we need to add a if touched thing, touching mouse pointer. And the same thing goes for here. Yep, so now you can still move your mouse around on the sides without actually triggering it. But if you move it like this, it will go. And it should also change the ghost effect. Okay, just set the ghost effects like this, like I show you here. And that will give you a bit of feedback, you know, visual feedback of when you can actually use it. Okay, so now the camera is up and now we need to add the camera menu. So let's make a new sprite again and import that camera menu. Can't delete this costume for some reason. That reason being scratch three. <laughs> okay, now I could. And uh, let's move this over here and make these parts here transparent, these black, big black areas. At least most of them, some can, some can stay. Okay. And now let's move it around a bit, make it a bit smaller maybe. Now it won't let me click up here because I, because of this thing here, because I need to download it. But I click download and it doesn't do anything, which is great. Let's download it, but it doesn't let me download it. So what do I do now? Can't save it, can't download it. Okay guys, so I just had to download the Scratch 3 uh, local editor, the, the, you know, offline editor, because I couldn't save um, the project anymore online and uh, I, the only thing I could do was read out the page and I couldn't even upload the download of the project I made so now I need to use the offline editor which is great you know that's great when almost a month after the product comes out it still has bugs like this I mean it's free but still it's, it's really annoying you know so let's continue working I guess uh, let's make it so the the this ca uh, camera menu hides when the game when the main menu starts and Then when the game starts it should still be hidden But should just wait until um, Should forever wait until the no should forever check if the camera is up and up is one, and if that's true, it should show, and if not, it should just hide. And let's let's just start it, and then we'll have a look at the positioning and size. So let's open the camera, and it's a bit too big, I'd say. So let's set it to eighty and one hundred and sixty, and minus 65. Now this is going to be important. You need to keep this the same way. You need to decide this once and then you need to keep it forever this way because we're going to make the clicking using the X and Y coordinates. Okay. So now let's add because now there's no place to read the X and Y coordinates anywhere. We need to make it say the X and Y coordinates you know, actually make this right, say the X and Y coordinates. And now let's make it so that duplicate it. Camera up, all this nice stuff. 
And now we need to add a lot, a lot of if clauses. Uh, so let's first uh, make this just an if, not an if else. Now let's add the first if else, which is if, and this is going to have a lot of ands. Okay, so this is the basic building block you'll need for every if clause. Now we n just need to check. Okay, so let's set it to 80 and 100. So what I'm doing right now is moving my mouse to the points at which which should be the threshold of where the mouse works, of where you can click the button. Yeah, so this is all between the region. Yeah, and then it should set it to, which camera is that? Five. So may let's make a new sprite. Camera menu select, uh, or let's call it camera menu hover. No, <laughs> select. And now let's add this around this stuff, which is if the mouse is pressed and the ma and the the mouse is also being touched. If touching mouse pointer and mouse down, where did that go now? Huh. Then it should check if that's true, and then set the camera menu select to five because that's the name of that camera. Next one we're going to do is one C, which is over here. So let's just copy and paste it all over again. Okay, so quick note, I just skipped the part where I actually did the whole scripting and now you, what you see right now is the full script. Now you can just enter all these values into your own script because I didn't want to uh, waste about four minutes of your time just looking at me, finding and filling in the right values because that would be a bit unnecessary. So here you go, you have the full script and now you just need to, uh, you know, it's not copy and paste, but just copy what I did into your own script. Okay, so now we can already select all the cameras, which is great. Yeah. And it should also, in each case, send um, a broadcast, which is camera.change. Each and every one of these. Yeah, and when that happens, the Static sprite should just show up really quickly and then just hide again. Let's just do that like maybe for four frames just and then hide again. And we should also add that no, the sound's already here, so let's just make it play that sound. And now, if we execute this again, it's not working. Why is it not working? Um, camera. Ah, stupid camera. Dot change. Okay, now. Yeah, and now we should also add in uh, wait until not mouse down because if not you can accidentally press it multiple times. Yeah, so that works perfectly. Now we can remove this say block here. Now we can al already change the cameras. Now we just need to add the actual cameras. But the variable already changes. And now we should also add the sound of the camera now that I think about it. So when the camera goes up, which is over here, cameras uh, put down which is used both for the up and down motion.
Okay, so now we have the the all this stuff working with the sounds and everything, and that's gonna be it for the tutorial today. And then in the n it's a bit so shorter than I thought. I'm gonna do the ne the all the cameras in the next one. I mean, we we did a lot of stuff today, uh, anyways. Um, and that's gonna be in the next tutorial how to make all these cameras actually work. Cause then we're gonna have to start with the AI already of the animatronics and all that stuff. Cause then we're almost we're already getting close to being done it's really a small game when you think about it it's just the the most complicated part is getting the camera sprites to work correctly and making the animatronics behave in a kind of intelligent way you know but other than that it's really not hard and then obviously making the the power go out and that kind of stuff but uh, it's not much left anymore we're almost I think we're about 40% done with the game yeah, so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like, please subscribe. We're already at uh, over 200 subscribers, which I'm quite happy about. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to see you in the next video. And good luck with your Five Nights at Freddy's game.